This video lesson looks at wave power and takes a closer look at some of the devices used to tap into the power of waves. The surface of a water wave, the molecules are moving up and down in simple harmonic motion, and that's what gives a wave power. It's that up and down, that change in kinetic gravitational potential energy. So to work out the power in a wave, we've got to figure out, first of all, the volume of that water that's moving. Uh, now that, that sinusoidal function shown in blue, the, the waveform, calculating its volume is a little tricky without using calculus, but we can simplify that recognizing that we've got an equal volume in that imaginary rectangle of height A and of length lambda, the wavelength. So we can work out the volume pretty simply for that uh, rectangular prism. And the gravitational potential energy is given by mgh. Now we've got to work out the mass of that rectangular prism and the height at which it, it moves. Now that gray box of water equal in volume to the real blue wave, um, half of it falls through a greater height than a over two and the other half falls through a lesser height than a over two but the average height of that water wave is a over two and that'll be the value for h the gravitational potential energy of the wave giving us the gravitational potential energy of the wave equal to mg a over two where of course a is the amplitude of the wave Now we're going to use the volume of the, of the wave and its density to figure out an expression for mass. And we know mass is just density times volume. And so the volume of that gray box is A times L, the length of the wave, times lambda, the wavelength. Multiply that by rho and you have the mass of the water. So now we have an expression for the stored energy in that water wave of one wavelength. And it's in gravitational potential energy form, and it's equal to one half rho, the density of water, lambda a squared L times G. We want the power in this wave, so we're gonna take this energy, the gravitational potential energy, and divide it by time. Uh, but actually we get one wave for every time equals capital T, the period. So we're going to divide that expression by capital T and get an expression for power of that water wave. So here's my expression for power. And I recognize that lambda over T, the period, is simply V, the wave speed. So I'm going to substitute lambda over T. I'm going to put V in there. And here's my expression for power. One half rho V L G A squared. Now the L depends upon how long the wave is. The bigger the wave, the more power there is. Uh, so we can talk about the power per unit length of wave. So the power per meter of wave front is equal to 1 half rho V G A squared. So if you know the speed of the wave and you know its amplitude, um, you can use the density of water uh, to figure out the power that that wave holds. Notice also that the power of the wave is directly proportional to the square of the amplitude. Uh, this is consistent with any intensity wave function. Uh, brightness for light, directly proportional to the square of the amplitude. Um, same with water waves. We're going to look at an oscillating water column. So the gravitational potential energy of the water does work on air pushing and pulling air through a special turbine called a Wells turbine. You'll notice here, although the air changes direction, the turbine continues to spin in the same direction, turning a generator, generating electricity. So 
So here's a diagram of an oscillating water column, an OWC, uh, with a wells turbine and a generator. Water is moving in towards shore. Water waves are moving at speed V and doing work on the air, driving the air through the turbine and then pulling air from the shore back in the opposite direction through the turbine. So when the crest enters the ocean side of the turbine compartment, it compresses the air, forcing it through the turbine. And when a trough comes to the ocean side, it pulls air from the uh, land side through the turbine. Wells turbine keeps it spinning in the same direction. And so you're, you can actually generate quite a bit of electricity, even with some medium uh, wave crests, medium amplitudes. So the power in that wave, again, is one half rho VGA squared. Uh, and essentially, that is the power that you're delivering to the air, forcing it through the turbine. Of course, you're not going to have 100% efficiency. You might get 40 or 50%. Here's a technology that's used to tap into wave power offshore. It's called a palamus. It's named after a species of sea snake, and you can see why. Inside the uh, cylindrical compartments here, there's water that moves back and forth through turbines generating electricity. It's anchored to the sea floor and pumps the electricity back to the shore. Okay, so here's a diagram of a palamus. Again, several sections snaking through the water. Uh, there's fluid inside that runs through uh, the turbines, spinning them, creating electricity. The palamus is anchored to the seabed, of course, and uh, transmission wires back to the shoreline transmitting the generated electricity. So some advantages the palamus, the palamus has over the oscillating water column is it's offshore. Uh, you know, some of your most pristine waterfront property, the oscillating water column, kind of gets in the way. Uh, there are some, I guess, drawbacks to the palamus as well. You might typically have uh, five or six or ten of these in a ray. Um, how would you like to be looking at this from your oceanside property, snaking through the water? It might be kind of cool. Maybe not. Another offshore power generation scheme, a buoy with an oscillating magnet. The workings of this big buoy lie below the water's surface. So the, bu the buoy floats on the surface and moves up and down in simple harmonic motion. There's a large magnet inside that rides along the rails, again moving up and down. And on the sides there are many coils. Moving a magnet through a coil creates moving electrons, electricity, and that's fed back to the shore. You typically have a, an array of these, perhaps uh, an array of 10 kilometers by 10 kilometers, so 100 square kilometers. That would be enough power to supply a, a large city with its electricity needs. Let's summarize this video lesson. Uh, number one, the power stored in a wave. We talk about the power per meter of wave front. And that is one half rho V G A squared. A is the amplitude, rho is the density of water, and V is the wave speed. Of course, this is the maximum power that you could possibly get a hold of, depending upon your, your power trapping scheme, oscillating water column. You're going to have uh, less than 100% efficiency, and therefore you're going to be able to grab less than this power per meter. An oscillating water column, actually the water drives air through the wells turbine, generating electricity. Downsides, uh, it sits on the waterfront, so some pretty pristine area it takes up and it makes a lot of noise. Think water snake and you've got the palamus. So it's an offshore power generation scheme. Water travels through the cylinders, moving turbines. It's anchored to the seabed and feeds electricity back to the shore. It's important to point out that the compartments of the palamus are closed, that the fluid that travels through the turbines within those compartments is contained within the compartments. It's not ocean water. Uh, the buoy with oscillating magnet, another offshore scheme. You typically find both of these in uh, an array of power generating devices. Uh, also remember that they can't be too far offshore because you're losing, uh, in the transmission of the electricity, you're losing valuable power. So they both certainly be within view of the shore. Practice problem time. 
get rid of the pause your viewer. Uh, this will be a short answer question, three parts here, and it goes like this. Waves of amplitude 1.5 meter roll onto shore at a rate of one every eight seconds. If the wavelength of the waves is 90 meters, determine the following. A, the speed of the waves. B, how much power there is per meter of shoreline and C, the power produced by an oscillating water column that is 50 meters long and is 60% efficient. Okay, good point to pause your viewer, grab a pen and paper, try these questions. Speed of a wave is just a product of frequency and wavelength. And of course, frequency is one over the period. And so we have all this information, the period eight is eight seconds, and we substitute it in and solve, and we get about 11 meters per second for the wave speed. Now we'll use our power per meter expression here, one half rho v g a squared. Now it's important to note that your rho, the density here, it's the density of water, which is 1,000 kilograms per meter cube. Although it's air that rushes through the turbine, it's the water, it's the potential energy of the water, or the power of the water that drives that air. It may not be 100% efficient in transferring that power into work per unit time done on the air, uh, but that's worked out into the efficiency of the OWC. So substituting in our values here for speed and amplitude, we get a power per meter of about 120 kilowatts. And again, that is per meter of shoreline. And our last question, an OWC, 50 meters long, 60% efficient. We put in our values here and we get an efficient, or uh, an output of about 3.6 million watts, 3.6 megawatts.